Looking back, if there was one common denominator for the things I loved as a kid, it'd be Dragon Ball. From entertainment to video games to toys, I wanted anything and everything Dragon Ball. While most kids' PS2 libraries looked like this, mine looked like this. With that being said, I thought it'd be fun to take the first ever Dragon Ball manga cover and recreate it in a low poly N64 style. Now you're probably wondering, why not PS1 style? What's the difference? Well, I'd say there are two main factors in differentiating an N64 model from a PS1 model. Smaller texture sizes and texture filtering. Textures on the N64 had bilinear filtering, giving their textures a more blurry look than that of the pixelated textures on the PS1. As for why I'm doing it in this style, well, I decided for this video, I'd replicate the art style found in Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. I figured with the anime aesthetic and the main character having a similar frame to Goku, it'd make for a great art style for this project. Starting with Goku, I used Goemon's model and the cover I was recreating as reference throughout the whole process. With Goemon's poly count at 460, I set mine to 500. For my textures, I capped the resolution at 64 pixels for each dimension. Looking at Goemon's textures, I figured only the most prominent features of the character should be painted, while the rest stays as a solid color. In this instance, I chose to texture the face, the torso and waist area of the gi, armbands, and the shoes. Things like the legs, upper arms, and hair remained a solid color. The simplistic style of both the mesh and texture portions of this model honestly made it more fun than challenging, with the most difficult parts being the texturing of the face and modeling of the hair. For a while I thought I was done with the model and was ready to move on, but I noticed I missed a few details, some being minor, like Goku's hair spikes being flipped, and some major ones like his signature tail that turns him into a were monkey and his power pole that's just a really thin cube. Goku caps off at 494 triangles. Now with Goku done, it was time for the almighty, wish-granting, mythical dragon known as Shenron. At least I think that's Shenron. So I didn't really have a model I could base Shenron's mesh on like I did with Goku. Instead I designed him how I would imagine an artist for an N64 game would have, using separate repeating cylinders to cover most of the body with the head at the end. I also decided to make a good portion of his mesh just flat faces with transparent textures mapped onto them as I didn't feel like they needed to be fully fleshed out meshes. This includes things like the fins on his back, arms and legs, and many other parts. This left really only the eyes, mouth, and body as actual textures, with his horns left as a solid color. Shenron's model caps off at 417 triangles. With both Goku and Shenron models textured, rigged, and posed, it was time to set up my scene. I made a transparent cloud texture that I mapped to multiple planes of varying sizes scattered throughout the environment, and attached a camera to a circular curve to rotate around both models. Outside of Blender, I demade the border of the original volume cover with a few artistic changes. And with all that said, it was time for the final render. But first, I'd like to thank my patrons over at Patreon. Thank you Angel and Dreamcaster for supporting my art and this channel. If you'd like to become a patron and support my projects as well as gain access to all my models, check out the Patreon link in the description below. Thanks! And without further ado, here's the first volume of Dragon Ball, done in an N64 style. 